What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is your buddy, Dr. J. Phoenix Singh, coming at you to be able to answer a valued viewer's question. If you guys haven't watched our channel before, we have awesome, awesome content all about PsyD programs as well as clinical psychology PhD programs. So please do check out the other videos on this channel and consider becoming a subscriber. If you enjoy the video, definitely comment below, smash that like button because it helps to be able to make sure this kind of content gets out to as many people as possible. So today what I want to chat with you guys about is a question I get all the time, which is, Dr. Singh, how on earth am I going to pay for a PsyD degree? 90% of individuals who graduate with a PsyD, which is an a alternative form of doctorate in clinical psychology, common in the United States, increasingly in Canada as well, with several universities there already adopting this model. It's a very practical type of degree, so if you don't want to be a full-time researcher, for example, or research for you just isn't something that you're overly interested in, even though you want to become a conscientious consumer of it so that you can actually understand where evidence-based practices come from, it's just not your cup of tea. You want to be a clinician, full-time, that's your thing. Well, that's a great option then is to be able to do a PsyD. Only issue is that they're like wicked expensive, right? So some of these are up to a quarter million dollars to be able to get the doctorate. So when you think about that in terms of just tuition, your cost of living in general has to be added on to that. And also you have to take into consideration something called opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is that, that if you're in one of these programs for, let's say, three years on the short end, five to six years on the long end, you're probably not working full time as well, or certainly not at your ultimate capacity that you'll be able to. And because of that, you are missing out on opportunities to be able to make more money, invest that money. And obviously, the earlier you can start investing for retirement, the more money you're going to have in that nest egg due to compound interest. So these are things to take into consideration. A lot of people, because of that, say, you know what, Dr. Singh, financially, I think I want to do a clinical psych PhD instead. But acceptance rates for clinical psych PhDs are are redonkulously low. Usually they're about 4% last year, no joke, because most of them didn't require the GRE. Acceptance rates were anywhere between 0.5% to 2%. That's crazy. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people decide to do consultation sessions with me because I walk them through exactly what they need to be able to get into these types of doctoral programs, both clinical psych PhDs as well as PsyDs. So if you ever need help in terms of preparing your personal statement, somebody to be able to look over and rip apart your CV in a constructive way, if you want just general guidance in terms of which of these types of degrees, you know, are you interested in completing? Make sure that you get in contact with me at www.jphoenixsing.com. Link in the description below. Also, join our Patreon community because we have an awesome kind of, you know, interactive chat that I check every single day. So if you guys have questions, I can respond in real time, okay? But the cool thing about PsyD programs is that now there are actually a couple of them. And when I say a couple, I do mean two that are fully funded here in the United States, and I want to go over those with you right now, okay? So the first one is at Baylor University, and the second one is at Rutgers University, okay? So Baylor is located in Waco, Texas. It's the world's largest Baptist university, if you happen to be a Christian like I am. And it's got its clinical psych PsyD program, which has been accredited by the APA since 1976, so like for a hot second, right? All students who are admitted to the PsyD program at Baylor receive full funding for up to five years. So if you take a little bit longer than that, maybe doing part-time, maybe not the right fit for you, okay? But PsyD students are still required to pay student fees for the duration of their education, and that generally ranges from three dollars to $4,000 a year, which is super affordable compared to, oh, I don't know, $50,000 a year in tuition, right? So... Teaching assistant positions are also available for a small number of students. If you're interested in pursuing that, that'll easily pay off those other three to $4,000 with annual rewards averaging out to about $5,000 a year. And their program is obviously because of all this wicked selective, okay? With only five to seven students being admitted per year. But if you want a fully funded PsyD, Let's up those credentials that you've got. Watch the other videos on this channel. You'll learn about exactly what you need to get into PsyD doctoral programs. I have a whole like 40 minute video explaining everything for you. Okay, so check that out. Rutgers, like I said, is the second university. So, you know, they're located in New Jersey, so East Coast of the United States. And they do provide robust financial support, but also for a limited number of students per year. 
Okay, so while some people's ID programs are fully funded, so that is a possibility there, through combinations of things like scholarships and again like work-study programs, which they help you get into, not all students are going to qualify for full funding, okay? But still, most students in this ID program will receive at least partial financial aid that's going to reduce the amount of supplemental loan-based funding that they'll need to complete uh, for their degrees. And, you know, again, Baylor since the 70s, same thing. Rutgers has had its APA accreditation since 1977. So like a hot second, over 40 years now, right? So again, over 90% of PsyD uh, in the recipients graduate with student loan debt. But keep in mind that even when it comes to clinical psych PhD programs, 77% of those students graduate with student loan debt. So student loan debt, this is something that the likelihood is pretty high that you're going to have it regardless of whether you do a PsyD or a clinical psych PhD, even though it is true that clinical psych PhDs are much more likely to be fully funded. But of course, like I said, because of that, the competition is fierce with a capital F. So always here for you guys. Like I said, I do provide consultation on getting into these types of programs. Visit me down in the description box below in terms of the link, www.jphoenixing.com. Let's get something on the books. I am making this in August. Guys, if it is August or September, you need to start getting your ducks in a row because we are going to start having applications for these programs due very soon. And the right time to start getting consultation is as early as possible in your undergraduate career because then you have a long time to be able to get publications get conference papers and posters, get personal connections, most importantly, with your target supervisor, and figure out who those target supervisors are going to be. Because you should only be applying to three to five of these programs. Don't be a silly goose and do what some people do and apply to 10 to 20 programs. You're out of your mind, and you are significantly reducing your likelihood of getting in anywhere because you're spreading yourself insanely thin, and the amount of tasks that you're going to have to do to get in anywhere is crazy high per university per program, okay? So because of that, you need to take all of your efforts and concentrate them in three to five programs, and that's where I help people in doing. So, love you guys. Appreciate you for watching. Talk to you in the next one. Peace.